first of all, I wore lipstick and I just want to say that I, I feel like I look good, even though it's a Zoom call. I just want to start with that. Yeah. But first of all, my sincere apologies. My intention was to be there. But I live up in Maine now and I do come down to the city quite often. But um, but we had a huge storm and I live way out on the end of a road and they they plowed, but then more snow and rain came and the in the the ice is this thick and I can't get out. I tried yesterday, cannot get out. I hired some people who finally arrived an hour and a half ago to dig me out. And basically they came in with sledgehammers to sledge through almost four inches of ice. So my apologies oh. for not being there, but I will be there later in the spring and I'm gonna be doing a workshop. So if you find what I'm talking to you about interesting today and you wanna to come to the workshop, we will let you um, come for free uh, because you should be seeing me in person, but I don't look this good in person anyway. So in a way it's probably better. Okay, so, so we're gonna get started. Uh, this is Frances Pearson from Blue Shoe Strategy. She's working out Hello. of New York today where she is not snowed in. So I'm not, uh, it was like 50 and sunny up, here. Yeah, put up the presentation. Thank you all very much for coming. Feel free, we've got plenty of time. So feel free to you know stop and ask questions if you have them, anything that you need. So let's just get this up in a big in the biggest way we can. Okay. Okay, so I haven't been there in over two years. And I used to speak for Sue maybe every six months or so. And I remember I went and looked at the last presentation that I made and some of the things that I was talking about then still hold true. But the truth is um, everything prior to 2020 should be set aside just for the purposes of the next half hour or so. Just set them aside in your mind. And if you could open up your mind to the opportunity and the potential that maybe every single thing is very, very different. Let me just walk through a couple of ways that might happen. Next slide, please. Um, okay, this is not the right deck. Francis, what's the next slide? Oh, okay, you can back up. Um, okay, I'm so sorry. Go two slides up, please. Okay, yeah, back back one slide. Okay, we're good. Okay, so there's two kinds of trends. There are mega trends and there are trends. Now, a trend is something that comes and goes, like the hula hoop. It was hot for six months and then it was gone. In the Hamptons, in high-end real estate, they're painting houses white with black trim. I don't know if they're doing that in Westchester or not, but, um, and that's a trend that will come and go that will not still be here in 10 years. That's a trend. But a mega trend is something that changes the way we live our lives. So if you think back to the last one that I use as an example is a long time ago, it was birth control. So after World War II, when birth control was invented, people could have sex outside of marriage without fear of getting pregnant. And all of a sudden the sexual revolution bloomed and people started actually having sex outside of marriage. That, that was a mega trend. It changed the way we lived our lives. People who dated didn't just date and then get married a month later, they dated for a long time. So it changed the trajectory of how we live. Okay, so in 2020, COVID hits. And what happened is over the next year, people changed the way they had been living their lives. And in my opinion, especially in markets like the real estate market, it changed the way they look at their homes. It changed the way they're buying their homes. And I've got data to back up my theories. Yay. So... Um, so we have to remember that what's happened is not a question of when are we going to go back to being able to gather like you are tonight without masks. Is anyone going to wear a mask, by the way? Um, you know, you know, it's not a question of going back to what was. It's a question of what 
how are people going to behave now and what shifts did they have to make over the last two years and which ones are they going to keep and that's where we're sitting right now so um it it changed the way people buy and it changed what matters to them and so what we know is this what matters to them is family a smaller group of friends a smaller posse a smaller posse a smaller uh world that they live in so for example in the hamptons interesting i'm going to use that as an example um, but I think it relates to you as well. So people had to leave the city. They came and bought their houses or moved to their houses in the Hamptons. A lot of very wealthy people got together five families, let's say, and they took a barn in someone's backyard and they quickly made it into a quote school. And those five families, their five kids went to, the, to that school and then they hired a teacher to come out to live at the house. And they basically made a compound for their family and the bubble that they lived in. And what's interesting, and this is what's important, is they liked it. They liked it better than being on the treadmill of a million dinner parties in 16 different locations, never someone's home. They liked staying home. They liked cooking. They liked changing their home. The things that became important to them were media centers in the home, offices in the home. Um, exercise places in the home. It's funny, <clears throat> when COVID hit, um, I went into isolation March 6th and I brought our Blue Shoes team together and I said, look, for sure, everybody's gonna still have a job for at least four months, even though we lost about 60% of our business in one day, okay? And then I went to my clients and I said, look, we'll cut way back, but you shouldn't stop your marketing. And then I went to, Francis will tell you, Francis made some good choices. We decided that Blue Shoe would put money, a little bit of money into everybody's account each week. And we would get together and we'd buy a stock, not based on, um, on the numbers, because that's not what I do. I have no ability to, to do that. But based on what was happening in the markets that we were working in, and so we were gonna invest in companies that we thought would do well with everybody isolated. The first company we bought was Zoom. I think that's, is that right, Francis? Zoom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I bought it at 65, it went to 580 or 690 or something like that. Now it's down in the 200s and we're furious that we didn't sell. But one of the choices Francis made when we would get together and choose that was Peloton because she thought you also a big go, mistake not selling yeah you can't mm -hmm. i don't remember what did you buy it at francis 50 60 i bought it a little late but then it went way up to five six hundred and now it's down to like thirty dollars okay. so we were really we had the best time and we're sort of like who needs to work we can just figure it out this way okay but as you're looking at those things zoom for example all right People can gather now, but they're not going to just gather. For example, IBM, we work with IBM. All of their events now are gonna be half, dig half virtual and half in person because what they realized is they could do really well virtually selling IBM stuff. They realized there was a market that didn't need to meet them face to face, which is where I'm gonna be going next. So if you keep in mind that this is a mega trend, and so we will never go back to living the way we did before. Now, it may inch its way back into going to more restaurants and things like that. But in general, what we're seeing trend wise is that's not going to be happening. So if we can go to the next slide. OK, I'm going to use the banks as an example. So you know how um, who lives in Westport? Anybody? Yeah. Okay, so they have branches. All the banks have branches. They have branches in Westport, in East Hampton, in LA, all, all of them have branches. And what happened was, why did they have branches? Branches never made money in the last 30 years. Most people, 50% of their people bank online, but people over the age of 50 had not made that transition to banking online. They kept going into the branches prior to COVID. Okay, when COVID hit, they couldn't go into the branches anymore. 
So they learned to do their banking online and they liked it a lot. So once they could start going into the branches again, they weren't, they weren't going to go in anymore. So now the banks can run their business much more profitably without using those branches. And many of the large banking groups like Chase and Citibank are going to be shutting down those branches that are local. Now, I just, um, I spend part of the winter and have a place in Palm Beach. And in Palm Beach, um, they had three or four branches, but we're talking about JP Morgan. We're talking about um, Goldman Sachs and those were all closed and have not reopened. Okay, that's part of this mega trend shift of how people are gonna live their life. So it's not just changing the way we bank, it's changing the way we buy things. It's changing what we're buying because I, I have a friend who's, um, who actually works for um, Manola Blahnik um, and I keep telling him, why would anyone wear those shoes? But at any rate, um, he's very, very big in fashion. And I did a podcast with him a little over a year ago about the shifts they were seeing in fashion. So I said to him, so are people only buying tops and not bottoms? And he, said, and he was like, what do you mean? And I said, well, I can tell you right now, like I'm wearing sweatpants right now, but I look nice on the top, right? Okay, so, so I'm like, I assume that if they're gonna buy something, they're buying tops and they're certainly not buying shoes. And sure enough, when he went and dug up the data, people stopped buying shoes like heels for Blahnik. And by the way, they're never going back. They've done the research. Women are not gonna be wearing those eight foot stilettos anymore. They're just not. They're gonna be buying flat shoes and Blahnik and people are either gonna adjust or they're gonna die. And that's the way it is. Okay, so those are all results. Those are all trends based on the mega trend of people changing, stopping, dead stop, dead stop on your life and then evaluating and saying, okay, how am I gonna live? Okay, enough about everybody else. What you really care about is how does that affect me? So let's go to the next slide. Okay, so get this, latest data, and I'm talking luxury markets, because the problem with some of the data that's sent out to you on real estate is it's national averages and no offense, I don't think the luxury market and the mass market in America in terms of real estate have the same trends and visions. I, I think they should be totally separate and quite often they don't separate that data out. But get this, a person will decide who they're gonna work with before they ever speak to them. So it used to be that you, a friend said to somebody at dinner, oh, you gotta call my broker, she's amazing, or he's amazing. And so the next day they called the broker, they had a conversation, usually they didn't see them on the conversation, but their voice mattered and they made a lot of determinations on the voice, okay. Right now, people are not calling somebody till they've already decided to work with them because they've spent so much of their time in the last two years doing their own research on things that they are not looking for the salesperson anymore to lead them somewhere. What they're looking for is what they want. And then they'll tag in to whoever can give it to them. So how do they decide that? They decide by using social media and evaluating the content that you are providing. And that's how they determine it. So if I'm at a dinner party and I say to Sue Baxter, oh, you're gonna sell your house, you've gotta to talk to my, my broker. Um, she's gonna say, oh, what's your broker's name? Write it down, writes it down. She goes home, she Googles it. She looks at their social media and if they're, and we're going to talk about what they want to see in that social media, okay? But, um, and so at that point, they will decide whether they're going to work with you or not. And if they see a house that they like, they're going to do one of two things. They're going to go to Zillow and they're going to look it up on Zillow and they're going to go back a ways, right? Or they're going to, um, click on somebody's social media around it, like the neighborhood or something like that. And then they're going to decide who they're gonna work with. It has nothing to do with whether it's your listing, nothing. 
Now, what does that mean? You know, it means that word of mouth is no longer acted on without additional research. So it used to be all you had to do was be great with your clients and you were going to continue to get a succession of additional clients. That trend is over, it's gone, it's history. What matters now is the content that you're providing. Okay, so um, anybody have any questions on that? Yeah, I do. Oh, you have to speak up a little bit because it's a little oh, hard I to do. hear. I do. Uh, I'm on the side here, sorry. Um, so if, so do you, do, they don't go, a lot of us put a lot of stuff on social media thinking they go to social media to find you. I think they've, they've been given your name and go to social media just to get the backdrop or a color of who you are. Wait, I'm, I, I, I'm not sure I can, if you, you're going to have to walk up, I'm afraid, and sort of yell at me okay. in the screen. So we, we, we put a lot of things on social media that are cookie cutter and like our, some of our companies uh, advocate, you know, uh, post, post, post. And people think if you put the public open house that looks like everybody else's, you know, they're going to come to your public open house. I well, you're, you're, wait, I, you know what? We can we can just uh, skip right, well, to, the, right, don't worry. That's yeah, right. to the bottom line. Look, um, that's exactly the problem is you're they're telling you to post, post, post. And it's funny. I remember sitting in the same group in the same room. I don't know if any of you were there or not. I think maybe Dawn might have been. But I remember saying I held up the magazine. I forget it was the Westport, some magazine in Westport, where it's like two thousand dollars for you to do an ad in that magazine. And I held it up and said, every single one of these ads looks exactly the same. Why would I call any of you? The ad is a picture of the house, the amount of the house, the logistics of the house next to another ad, which is the same thing. You paid $1,000 for this ad and there's no differential. And I don't know why anybody does this. It made no sense to me. None of our clients participate in that kind of advertising. Well, it's the same thing on social media. Social media. It's not about post, post, post. And I'm going to tell you what it is about. And what you're setting we have. yourself apart. You have to set yourself apart. Wait, say it again. To, you have to set yourself apart from others. You have to have something that's going to captivate the reader. So, for example, like I'm an award winner. I always emphasize my awards. I emphasize a five-star professional. So even if people don't know me or whatever, they'll say, geez, you know what? She's, she's obviously closed a lot of houses because she's, well received with outstanding customer service and, and is constantly, consistently, you know, hitting those records. I think that's what sets you apart. And your testimonials. You have to have testimonials. Yeah, I would, I would, I would take, I would challenge that. And I would say nobody cares about you. They care about themselves. Well, and I would say, I, yeah, so and I, but I think that that allows you to have a peak of interest. Because yeah, I, know, I, yeah. I, I was self-employed for years prior to being a realtor, which I'm still self-employed, 1099. And what's well, see, but, but, uh, but uh, yeah, but to just sort of point out to where you're going on that, everybody's doing that. Here are my testimonials. They all say the same thing. Oh, you shouldn't work with any other broker but her. Fabulous, fabulous. Okay, the, it's a picture and no offense, some of you even look the same, like you know, your hair's the same, you know, not all of you, but I'm just saying. We all look the same. Okay. Oh, no. I, I will tell you, I, I used to, I lived in, I was, I was like, I, 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 um, I raised a child in, New, I raised a child in New York City, and um, my now ex-husband was a very, very wealthy man, uh, investment banker, and my daughter went to the Nightingale Bamford School, and, um, and we lived on the west side, because that's where I wanted to live, and every mother there wore a headband, like, you know, one of those um, velvet headbands. And my daughter in, was in second grade and she was crying saying, you don't wear, you don't, you know, you have to wear a headband. So I had, we had a driver in a car and in the, in the council of the car, I had all these headbands and I would pick her up from school and stick a headband on my head. And then I'd take it off when I got in the car because I didn't want her to feel like an outsider. But if due respect, let me just roll through some of my ideas and maybe they'll resonate, maybe they won't. But I believe that what you're saying is a uh, testimonial means nothing to me because it's probably your best friend, Sandy, who wrote it. Like there's no value in that testimonial unless I'm actually seeing a person do it. And I don't, 
you know, we don't do testimonials for blue shoe strategy and we turn business away all the time. You know, it's just, I, I don't, I don't agree with you, especially in real estate because already there's a distrust factor. When you start out a pitching somebody their business, the first thing they think is she wants me to sell my house quickly so she can get her biggest commission. Or she wants me to buy an, a, an overpriced house. So she, and she's going to show me the most expensive houses, not the right house necessarily. In other words, there's already a sense of distrust at the get-go. And by the way, I've done some research on that, and that is true. Therefore, a, a, a testimonial that you put on an ad from, and it says, you know, Catherine from Westport, you know, anybody can write that. So I don't know that that's really giving me what I need, but let's go to the next slide because I think I'll be able to answer that question. And you may not agree and far be it for me to tell you I'm right or wrong, but we'll let's see what you think if we go to the next slide, Francis. Okay, here's what they want. They wanna see a mirror of themselves, and they wanna see a window into that which they aspire to be. That's what everybody wants. So, what they want to know is that if I meet with you, I'm not going to feel uncomfortable, you know, and so, and that, and, and that you are going to see me and I am going to see you and we are going to connect. And then they want to see that which they aspire to be, which is somebody who can give me what I need to get to what I'm aspiring to get to. Okay, so that's what I think they need. Okay, somebody, some woman, a faceless woman named Catherine saying what a great broker you are doesn't give me either of those two things. So if you ask yourself as you're putting up content, is my content doing those two things? You're already gonna be out of the gate, but let's move on because I've got so much to go through and um, we're already halfway in. So uh, Francis, next slide. Okay, so it's not about the houses anymore. It's about showing them how they're going to live in that house. Because the, yeah, the, uh, you know, look, we're, we're, do, we're having huge success with the brokers we work with. So I, I know that this is working. I'm gonna show you how, but you know how everybody, who, did anybody just have a baby? <laughs> I can't. I can't see very well. I, you know, I turned sixty-nine two days ago. So I, I hear. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have said that. Okay, okay. So I just got this baby announcement. You know, Charlotte, seven pounds six ounces, forty-two inches long. I'm making it up. I don't remember what the numbers were. I'm like, who the fuck cares? <laughs> you know like why is the why are those features the discerning features when a baby's born like is it supposed to be a big baby or a little baby is it supposed to be a short baby a medium baby or a long baby in other words when did we come up with that as the interesting features of well, the birth of a baby okay until someone changes that it's going to continue that way and I couldn't help when I got this in the mail last week to think, oh, this is perfect for my presentation for Sue Baxter's group because it's the same thing. It's not necessarily the top of the line and they're only gonna read the first three lines. That's all you've got. It's four bedrooms, three be you know, it's like, you know, basically if they're looking at a certain price range, it's always three or four bedrooms. Okay, and if it's 12 bedrooms, you can figure that out later. But my point is this, what are the distinguishing features that make this house a mirror of myself and a window into that which I, that I aspire to be? And therefore, show me those features. So one of the things we're doing now is we do now, everything we do is different than everybody else in uh, all the other real estate brokers. For example, in the Hamptons, we work in New York, we work in the Hamptons, we work in Palm Beach. All of them are very different now than, they, than anybody else. So the layout of the, of the house, right? The layout, your layout. Instead of it being, here are the, here are the room uh, you know, dimensions, which by the way, are in there. But then 
it shows like a sun, a small sun, and that says this is a sunny room. Mm -hmm. Or it shows half sun, half cloud, which says this room half the day has sunshine. You know, it's it it might do we might have a picture of parquet floors and they're small, they're little tiny pictures. So when you open up this layout of the house, what I see is more than just the normal layout that every other broker's giving me for that same house. And the other thing is when we're pitching to get houses so that they're represented by the people we represent when you go in for the pitch and she goes in and she says, this is how I do the, your house layout. They're like, wow, we love it. So what you need to say to yourself is what is the window? What is the aspiration? So if somebody is going to care about what kind of floor it is, then they're going to care. Now also we we'll, we might say uh, circa, <laughs> We use the word, you know, the little C, circa 1882 or circa 2016. So we do that little thing on the side. So you still know that the house was built in X date, but we give you information in the house that you then, these are sort of all these adjectives that are missing from other content that we're doing. So it's not about showing them the houses, it's showing them how they're going to live in it. And the way you do that is to bring additional value added that is not the norm or what's acceptable. Basically, everybody's sort of treading water, giving the same information out when really you got to be standing outside the water to stand out. So does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. very much. Yeah. Um, and so now, by the way, we may even put a picture um, you know, meatloaf died a couple weeks ago, right? Meatloaf's first, I loved meatloaf. Did everybody love meatloaf or was it just me? I know, right? It, I Over and over again. Anyway, I kept wondering the first two albums that came out, I kept wondering what he looked like because there was no media then. I mean, you didn't know that stuff, right? And I lived in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. We'd, I had no idea. Meatloaf was not coming to visit me. So, um, and then I read years later that they wouldn't let his picture be on the cover of the albums because he was so unattractive. And, and I thought, oh, that's really interesting. And what it was, was he was not a window into that which I would have aspired to be. And so I realized that you could hear his music, but he was, he at that point in time was very heavy, like 400 pounds and very unattractive at a time when most rock stars were very attractive. So they were afraid if you saw that picture, it was not gonna be a mirror of yourself or a window into that which you aspire to be, and you weren't gonna buy his music, which leads me to, you know, 35 years later, my now ex-husband, but good friend, H2, I refer to him, second husband. Um, he, he was like, we would buy art and somebody would say, oh, would you like to meet the artist? And he said, no, why ruin the art? Like. Uh you know, and it's true. So what you need to decide is, is my look, the look that's going to be a mirror and a window of aspiration? If so, then you can put a little picture on that particular page. You know, everything is visual. It's not written anymore. So you need to decide what that's going to be. But we take into consideration those, that mantra of a window, you know, a mirror of themselves and a window into that, which they aspire to be all the time. So we're going to go through some of this new content and I'm going to show you how it's working, but keep going, Francis. Next slide. Okay. So what's your toolbox? Okay. Um, your website. Now, what we have done is we are no longer, you know, you know how every, every broke, uh, every real estate company has a website and you're, in the website the same way everybody else is, right? Okay, we are now building websites outside of that. And so, and the website outside of that is less a website, it shows all the listings, don't get me wrong, but it's much more around um, living the life in the area and in the homes that they're selling. So the website's presenting new and interesting content. So I believe <coughs> that every real estate broker should have, <coughs> excuse me, 
Sorry. Every time you cough, don't you think you have COVID? Okay, I don't. Um, so I believe that everybody should have a website and it should be outside the parameters of the website of your agency. Okay, social media. I think in every high-end market, you need to have a LinkedIn account. I think TikTok is taking off in a big way. Yes, in the real estate luxury markets, hard to believe. Instagram, Facebook, maybe. I'm sort of over Facebook and I just, um, I'm giving a presentation on Friday about the ethics of technology and social media platforms. And I sort of feel like it's sort of an oxymoron because there aren't any, but, um, but I'm not sure how I feel about Facebook and I'm not sure you in this luxury market need it. Okay, podcasting, critical, YouTube, critical, newsletters, you critical. Those are the elements. If you focus on these elements and you bring in the content that we're gonna walk through now, and you bring in that mirror and vision of what someone aspires to, you're gonna have a whole different experience as you're working, I promise you. So next slide on that. Any, wait, any questions about that? We're gonna go through these. I'm gonna come back to this slide later, but um, anybody have any questions on any of that media? What is or is not working for you maybe? I have, I'll talk real loud, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, um, I think those are all great but you need to hire somebody to get all that done. I mean, I don't think we can do it ourselves. I know that's where you come in, <laughs> but- Well, that is what we do, yeah. Well, yeah, you're talking a lot of money though. Well, it's not a lot of money actually, but, but here's the thing. One of the things we're thinking of doing is um, we're thinking of moving to, uh, to put together a cooperative, which I'll talk to you about later, but here's, here's the thing. I don't know what you spend on marketing, but the $3,000 that you spend on that one print ad in Westport um, magazine could take care of you for three months in social media. So I don't really, I don't really think people realize that you're spending money anyway, but you're spending it probably in the wrong places. And you're still back in a, before this trend and mega trend really took over. Now, by the way, most, some of what I'm saying now, I said back then, but, but here's the difference between then and now. Then you had the ability to meet with somebody and then they decided that that day is over. That ship has sailed, it's over. So therefore, you no longer have an alternative because these are the only ways for you to be seen enough to be chosen. You know, does anybody watch Grey's Anatomy? Okay, I don't either, but did you a long time ago? Yeah. Okay. At some point, she says to him, she says to McDreamy, pick me, choose me, love me. Okay. They cannot do that if they don't see you in really interesting, engaging, entertaining, and educational ways. Now, one of the things that our company um, believes in is we call it the three E's, and it's something we've developed over the last 20 years, and it's engage, educate, and entertain. And we're going to send you this whole presentation. We're taping it, and it'll be emailed to anybody who's there, so you can, you can hear this again if you want to go over it. Um, I ask you one, one last quick thing. I think I'm a very good agent, but I have an extremely boring life. <laughs> yeah, but it's, again, it's not about your life. But, but nobody, I, ca nobody cares about you. They care about themselves. I'm saying I have no interesting things to share. You know, well, but what you need to decide is what is aspirational and interesting to the people. Yeah, to the people who you're selling to. Nobody cares what you're doing. They but don't. don't you, aren't you suggesting that we reflect yeah. the things that, yeah. that they aspire to? Yeah. And so therefore we have to put ourselves in those kinds of luxury situations. No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that you have to present them the life they're going to live in the house they're going to live in, in a way that is palpable to them. Actually go to the next slide, Francis. I think it's one that will work for this question. Okay, here's Sarah Minardi from Saunders and Associates in the Hamptons. 
here's what we had. We Well, she didn't post it. We did. She doesn't mind me telling you. I'm seeing this trend for walkways at homes all over the Hamptons and don't think it's going away anytime soon. Planning your spring landscape update might be something to consider. Okay, and basically it's showing that everybody's growing grass in between stone. And do you see how you see all that? Can you see it in the picture? Yes. Okay, all right. And we took those pictures from Hollander Design which is a landscaping firm out of New York, which we found on Instagram that we think is friggin' genius. And so this is how we presented it. By the way, I promise you, I've seen her house. It doesn't look like this. She does not live like this, okay? But you can but, use pictures though? What? You can use their pictures? No. We reposted it. So we didn't take them and pretend they were our own. We reposted oh, okay. it from them so we gave them credit. Yes. Yeah, it says underneath there, reposted from Hollander Design. Okay. Now, 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 by the way, we tagged Hollander Design in New York because when we looked at Hollander Design's followers, there are people she'd want to sell real estate to. And there are people who are working on landscape design, who are moving and selling and buying. And, you know, it's a perfect market. Okay. They are thrilled that she brought them out to the Hamptons in this way. So they say thank you and they they acknowledge it. And because they're tagged, people who are following them see uh, Sarah Minardi from Saunders. Okay. And then we also, we, we talked about a trend. This is a trend, not a mega trend. It's a trend. And one of the reasons it's a trend, we also did a blog, blog post for her about how COVID comes and goes. But when it's here, your outdoor living room, everyone needs an outdoor living room, which is another room in your house you didn't even know you could have. And so when, we sh when she's showing houses now, we actually have had designers draw where that outdoor living room could be if they needed to meet with people outside. So what we're doing is saying, this is how you can live in this world at this moment in time with the trends that are happening. This is how you can live this way um, successfully. And it works because every other broker is saying, oh, I've got this house on this road or, you know, I just sold this. Oh, I'm so grateful. If, if one more broker says, thank you you know, for the great seller or buyer who bought this, nobody cares. They care about themselves and they know you're bragging. They know you're trying to say, look, I can sell your house right now. Any, anybody can sell your house and anybody can show you a house. So that's not a value added proposition, but this is because in addition to that, when she meets with them and she talks with them, she provides additional resources because those additional resources are critical to somebody who's looking for a mirror of themselves and a window into that which they aspire to be. Okay, we put this up, we put it in her stories. I think on this one, it was something like 4,000 people, Fran Francis will maybe remember better than me, but thousands of people went into stories and saw this. Um, do you, uh, you know, I don't remember, you know, we've had, on some things we've done, we did something um, for a, um, does every, anybody know the Old Salem Horse Farm? Yes. Okay, big client of ours. Okay, you know, we, I think there was something like 18,000 people that did want, that pay, that saw something that we did. If you put up content that talks about how to live a life now, instead of constantly putting the product you're selling in front of them, you're going to win. By the way, you don't see any house on this. She's not touting a house. She's touting, touting how to live in a house. And she's giving them ideas that they can, you know, they, what, what do they do? They tag this, they send it to their friend, you know, and they say, oh, you know, can you do this in my backyard? Okay, let's go to the next slide. Francis. Okay. I actually, can you back up? I'm sorry. I don't want to do that yet. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is the content that you're doing doesn't have to be the exciting life that you're living. This is such a good example. 
of you have to be putting up content and yes, you should do a lot of it, but you shouldn't do more than quality content. So you put up as much as you can, that's sort of relevant. Now, um, Francis, maybe you can, uh, I don't know if you can do this on the side because you're sharing your screen, right? But can you go find that thing we did about how to walk on ice? Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to stop sharing my screen hey, if you okay. want me to. I'm gonna keep talking while you're looking for it. So just ignore Francis as she digs into our trash. But um, so what I'm saying is there every, something happens every day. Actually, this is better. I can see you better. Something happens every day that's interesting about how you live your life there. You know, pretty much every day. Okay, Valentine's Day is coming up. Okay, what three places sell great chocolate in the Westport area? And you go in and you introduce yourself and you say to the chocolatier, you know, I'm going to be posting and I have, I hope you have a couple thousand people at least following you by now. If not, we should talk about it. Um, and no, I mean, I'm, we're laughing, but there's no reason why you shouldn't have that. You can get that. You absolutely can. It's not that hard. Okay. So, and then you can say, I'm going to put that up. You know, um, can you show me the three things that are the three best chocolates to send to, to buy for somebody, you know, for, for Valentine's Day. So that's content about how to live their life in their house, in their community. You know, you could do a blog post on, you know, the 10 churches within a 10 mile radius of Westport, Connecticut. And you could give a little history. I mean, and the stuff you would want to give is interesting, which, you know, might be the history when the church was, was founded, who the minister is. Maybe you ask him for a quote because then he's going to pay attention to who you are. What you're trying to do is to recognize that everybody has a watering hole and we all meet at the watering hole to drink. And if you're the only one at your watering hole, then you're not going to build your brand or your business. So what you need to do is how do you bring people to your watering hole? The way you do it is not by who you are, but it's by who they are. So every time you reach out in your community to bring their content onto your platforms that talk about how someone lives in your community that you're selling to, then you're adding people to your watering hole and they will pay you back in spades. They will. Okay, so Anybody have any, anybody, anybody want to throw out content they put up that did well or didn't do well and ask maybe why, you know, do you want to, do you want to do, go ahead. Okay. So the best thing I ever posted may probably not meet the criteria, but I happened to be on a road in Wilton <clears throat> and there was an injured owl on the, on the, uh, on the side of the road, like in the road, but not and I videotaped this man getting out of the car and approaching the owl. And he threw his, uh, he threw his coat over the owl, picked it up, and then moved it to safety, died, and then took it off. And I got like 700 views or something like that, which is a lot. Oh, do you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, that's amazing. I actually, I think I saw it. I'm pretty sure I did. Um, yeah, you know what? I think that's great. Okay, so what is, we know, we know that people love animals. They don't care about you, they care about, but they care about animals. Okay, I, you know, one of the things that would be fun to do, which you just gave me the idea for, which we haven't done, but I, I can tell you, we're going to do it for our clients is, um, the dog's point of view of this house. <laughs> like you could do a really fun video of, oh, you know, your dog is 40 pounds. This is how he'll live in this house. Do you know what I mean? Like you, you can entertain, engage, yeah. and educate all at the same time. All right. We know people love, love dogs. We know that. Okay. So you could go and do a podcast or you could hire Blue Shoe. We, we charge $100 to do a podcast for you that you, and basically you could say, okay, we want you to interview a vet, the, the best vet in you've chosen because you are an expert in living in the community 
is John Doe. We're going to interview him on um, the issues that dogs face in Westport, Connecticut. You know, what's specific to Westport? Again, the common denominator is you're selling a life in Westport. And then by the way, oh, and here's 10 houses. <laughs> you know, like here's 10 houses. Okay, so uh, Francis, did you find it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I, I live in Maine. The last, th I came back from Palm Beach three weeks ago. I haven't been able to leave my house. Okay, oh. so we did this for Argo Real Estate in New York. Right. Winter lessons, how to walk on ice. Normally when we walk, our legs ability to support our weight is split mid stride. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And then, I mean, okay, but can I tell you, we sent this postcard out to, um, thanks, Francis. We sent this postcard out to houses, I mean, to uh, Fifth Avenue, Park Avenue, Central Park West. We can go back to the deck, Francis, thanks. Oh, okay, we're done. Okay. Yeah, by the way, our beloved Harold Cobner passed away and I just saw his name, made me really sad. Um, one of the great brokers of all time. He sent out a Valentine's Day card instead of Christmas cards. And the front of it we designed was, it was all black and then it had a keyhole and then a heart inside the keyhole. And it said, um, nothing says I love you like a new house. <laughs> and, and this woman who got it thought he was coming on to her and he was like, she was like, Howard, I'd love to see you. You know, I mean, it was very, very funny, but um, okay. We don't send Christmas cards out, but we send Valentine's day cards out because Christmas cards, there's 50 Christmas cards. Nobody pays attention to yours. It's a waste of money, but a Valentine's day card from a real estate broker with some sort of content or in December, sending out the, how to walk on ice card, which by the way, they stick on their refrigerator you know, and you send it out to a zip code and it's, you're not saying to them, buy a house from me. What you're saying is I want to make sure you can live well in the house. Right. Okay. Next slide, Francis. Okay. I really believe in podcasting. I see how it works. Now, again, this was a minority pod podcast that we did. Um, and it was called Staging a Listing with Sarah Minardi and Jeffrey Walski. Now, Jeffrey Walski does a lot of staging up in Westport and up in northern, in a little north of Westport also, um, up by, um, you know, by Old Salem and in that area. And then he also set, what he does is he comes in and he stages beautifully. And then you can buy the furniture with the house, which a lot of people do. So that's how he gets his payment, so to speak. And we did this podcast and I can't remember how many thousands of people listened to it, but it basically was him saying what to do to stage your house. Okay. We put it out. We boosted it on all, all social media. We boosted it in New York city. We boosted it in the Hamptons. It did really well for Sarah. I don't remember how many calls she got, but she got numerous calls because of this podcast. And by the way, it was timeless we will probably relaunch this podcast without redoing it because nothing's changed. We'll probably redo it. It's not expensive to do a podcast and it goes a long way. The other thing is, is there anybody who owns a company, their own company or anybody from like any of the companies here today? Um, okay. You can ask more of your company in terms of the content you're putting out. Um, Francis, we're get, we can we can shut this down now if it's okay because then I can see them better. Okay. Um, okay, so you can say I'm going to do this podcast and I want it to go on the company website and I want it to go on the company social media. If you ask the marketing team at your company and give them good content, they will post it and it will make a difference. And what they do is they end up putting their investment in the brokers that are doing, you know, the larger brokers are getting more of their content creation and presentation um, than the smaller brokers. But when you ask, they will definitely do it. Definitely do it. Okay. There are so many pieces of content that when people say to me, I can't think of anything, I can't think of anything. It's so rich, the content that's out there to work with. But podcasting, video is everything. But we we started doing during at the beginning of COVID, we started doing virtual open houses. And then we realized this is the best thing friggin' ever. 
And I'm sure you all did them, right? Okay. And we then boosted that virtual, um, uh, virtual thing, but then we started playing games. The beginning of it, it'd be like, okay, you're going to see a chocolate heart somewhere in my virtual, the first five P the first person who emails me or texts me at this text, which you want their text. Um, you know, I'll give you a $25 gift certificate at the local Starbucks or something, you know, in other words, play with them. Don't just do what everybody else is doing. Play with them. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, I mean, you've got to entertain, engage, and educate all at the same time. Now, at the beginning, um, I want to open this up, and I've been talking for an hour. Shame on me. But at the beginning, somebody was saying, look, we don't have any inventory. Nobody has any inventory. So what we're doing about that is you can partner with someone else's inventory. Make friends. It's hard to do in this industry. I understand that. <laughs> but everybody's got friends who are brokers. So what you do is... You call her up and say, I know you're taking this listing live in a week. Is it okay if I post the listing because I like it? And is it okay if I come and shoot a couple short videos of what I like about the house? And so what, what, what we're doing is, so then they go in and maybe it might be the faucet in the living, the faucet in the kitchen. This is the best faucet I've ever seen. And I've seen hundreds of faucets. Oh, and the listing is this, and this is how much it is. You're not saying you, you have the listing, but if your friend okays it, and usually they do, then you can be posting new listings. They're just not yours exclusively. It doesn't matter. But the way to do it is collaboratively. I believe in synergistic connections always. I believe, like Sue and I have worked together for years. And by the way, Francis, can you go find one of Sue's fabulous? Didn't she do a uh, Halloween video? Oh, yes. I can dig that up. Okay. Uh, you know, Sue, you can thank me later for this one. Um, <laughs> now, by the way, well, Sue would try anything. When we had, came up with this idea, she's like, you can't be serious. I'm like, yeah, we really we think it's great. We love it. You know? <laughs> anyway, we're going to show you how bad it is. Very bad. But, um, but don't, you know, be outside the box, but still be you. Now, Sue is entertaining and engaging on her own. She's also really good at what she does, but she doesn't have to sell that part. Don't be scared on Halloween. There's lots of problems out there and you want to make sure you keep your house safe and secure. So I have a couple of tips and tricks for you to use just to make that happen. Keep your walkways nice and clear of debris so no little goblins trip. Make sure that your railings are secure. Don't use any candles because that can create a fire. Only use wrapped candy so no goblins can tamper with it. Light up your home nice and bright and keep your pets safe and secure inside. And be really smart when you open the door. Halloween is a $7.9 billion business. So enjoy it and have a happy Halloween. I'm Sue Baxter with FM Home Loans. Yay! Was that a long time? No, it was like two years ago. No, it more than I can tell you about a while ago. But here's what's funny about that. Um, here's what's funny about that. She put in Halloween's a $31 billion industry. Exactly. Yeah. She's a numbers girl. I immediately go, oh, she's a broker. Of course she talked about the numbers. Do you know what I mean? She wasn't totally flippant around it. All right. Now, the first year of COVID in October 2020, we put together a postcard scavenger hunt that um, we did in the Hamptons for some of our brokers. And basically, it was a scavenger hunt postcard that was sent out. And it took you on a tour of her listings. And then at the last listing, there was candy to take. So kids who couldn't go trick or treating could still go out and do Halloween in their costumes. And it was huge. We sent it to, I, I think 300 houses, people who live there year round. We didn't, we didn't target New Yorkers. We targeted local uh, people, but now local people selling their houses in the Hamptons, same as there, you know, it's a huge market. So you can find ways to, again, choose how someone's going to live 
in that lifestyle. So I'm going to wrap it up because I've gone an hour. I'm happy to answer any questions you have, or if you want to run an idea by me, or you want me to come up with an idea for something that's coming up or anything like that, happy to, happy, happy to do it. Um, but I wish you all well. But I believe that the more you sell the lifestyle, the less you sell the homes, the stronger the broker you're going to be. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Anybody have any questions? I do. Uh, Go ahead. Okay. What do you think? Well, like we're in the last, we're in the Westport market, right? Or local around here. What is a reasonable monthly budget to spend on somebody like Christine or getting these podcasts and to, enough where it makes a difference, not enough where it's drip, drip, drip. Money wise. Well, I guess you may guess, not want to share that. I don't know. But. No, yeah, yes. yeah. Look, here's the thing. You can do it successfully without spending a lot of money or, but once you start to sell you see, I hate to give you a number because I have seen people. And when we started out with some, one broker we were working with in the Hamptons, when we started out, maybe she sold four or five houses a year. And last year, I think she sold, I don't know, 20, 30 houses, maybe, you know, okay, she's increased her budget as she's done better. But you can go gorilla, you what what can you what should you spend what you need what you what you can. So what you do is you take what you've got, and then you back into it. Now, if you want to email me and tell me what you think you can afford for the next three months to spend, I will quickly email you back here's how I would recommend you spend it. Because I don't think it's fair to say to anybody, look, it's been a great market. That's true. But it hasn't been a great market for people who didn't already have some sort of foothold in the market. And so it's hard to really build that up. So if you want to send that to me, or you want to do a 10 minute call, I'm happy to just have to have you and I sit down because I can see on your face that it's a concern to you is all the stuff I'm putting in front of you going to cost a lot of money. That postcard was, it was $150 to make Francis, right? I don't, and it was, I mean, yeah, it's just the cost of uh, designing it, which can be really low and then just mailing it out and you can, you know, choose how many people you want to mail it to. So you really are flexible with the budget yeah. there. Or you, or you can do another thing that we did when someone can't afford a mailing, you know, that whole thing was done, I think for $600. Okay. Yeah, that sounds right. You know, which by the way, when you're touching somebody that closely for $600, it's pretty good, you know? Um, so, but, but what we also say is, I just hate to say to somebody, you need X dollars. I guess what I'm feeling is that from what I've presented to you, you feel like this is gonna cost a lot of money. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money, it doesn't. You know, you could design a postcard and you could drop it off. Well, one of the postcards we did in the Hamptons for another client was we did, um, um, so, you know, um, uh, vegetable stands are very big in the Hamptons which is sort of a joke because sometimes you see them bringing the vegetables in from Florida or wherever, but whatever. <laughs> anyway, you know, the vegetable stands are very big. So what we did was we took um, the East end, we made a map and then we put the vegetable stands. And then on the back, we put a little bit of information about them, the hours they were open, that it came from, you know, this family from the Hamptons or what, you know, just entertaining stuff. Okay. She dropped those off at the farm stand. She made a lot and dropped them off in May and all summer people took them and she didn't mail them. It was not an expensive endeavor at all. You don't have to spend a lot of money. You just have to be creative about it. Can I ask something? It's like Maria was trying to ask you about like the number. How about percentage? Can you say- Wait, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, somebody, I can't, if they're talking, I can't hear. So hold on. Yeah. Um, I just want to ask it slightly differently when Maria asked the question. Is there like any percentage of the money you make you should invest into the uh, marketing? Like, can you say it this way roughly? And another thing, if you're on, for example, upcoming trend and your business is progressing, how is it? Is it proportional also has to grow? So 10%? Yeah, yeah but you know, that's, that's true. But that's like when you say to somebody, who is selling real estate, who hasn't had a sale in six months. And you say, okay, you've got it. And they've got so much debt. And I mean, look, it's a tough world right now. 
I'm not going to say to that person, okay, you have to take this percentage and reinvest it. You know, it's just not worthy of it. You know what, what you don't want to do is kind of put the kind of pressure on yourself. That's going to have you fail. I believe in succeeding and I believe in positive and I believe you can get this done for very little money, but it might take you work. Like, um, we just saw we just saw a video that I thought was really good that I, I downloaded I'm sent to my team which we're going to be using and basically it said <coughs> signposts of the Hamptons and the, the broker had driven by the Sag Harbor movie theater and so there was three seconds of the of the signage from the Sag Harbor movie theater and then she had driven somewhere else and and there was a uh, you know, a sign for um, um, seafood, fresh seafood, you know, uh, so, and it was, and she said signposts of the Hamptons, okay, signposts of Westport, signposts of Greenwich, you know, that cost zero. But when she up uploaded it, she tagged those places in the Instagram upload. So those places saw it, reposted it, you know, fabulous signposts of the Hamptons. I can't remember exactly the verbiage. Okay. So those people expanded her base. She paid nothing for that. It took her, you know, she was driving down the road, you know? Um, so you have a ton of content because you have a ton of assets in the communities in which you live. And so that content is just there. You just have to grab it. So I, I hate to, I hate to talk about budgets, but you know, the more you spend, the more you're going to be seen, no question about it. But at this moment in time, anyway, the other thing I would say about that is, again, they're going to decide who they're going to use before you get to meet them. So your presentation does matter enough that you want to try to do it at a quality level that you can. Um, one, one more question. You had talked about some content ideas to help drive inventory, uh, because that is right now the critical problem of the year. Right. Well, one of the, we've done three things. One is we've synergized with brokers who did get a listing, right. which I told you about. By the way, that's worked very well. Okay. 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 The second thing is we dropped off a package at people who ended up not putting their house on the market that had been pitched over the last five years. And we dropped off a packet and in the packet, Actually, I don't think we've dropped them off yet. I'm not sure they're finished, but it's on the list to do. In the packet is how, here's, here's what I think your house is worth now. And uh, if you're thinking about it, I'm happy to sit down with you. And I think it was gonna, it's gonna be like 30 or 35 homes or something. So going back to those that didn't sell that might still be thinking about selling. And the other thing is we are hitting the obituaries. Oh. Well, I, oh. there you go. well, I think there's a way to do it that's not unpleasant. Do you know what I mean? And I mean, you don't go to the to the funeral, but at the same time, you can certainly find out who the next of kin is and you can send them a note and say, I'm really, really sorry for your loss. And you don't, you know, and then you and then you can say, and if you do need anything, I'm available if you need anything. It's, there's a way to do things that are, you know, they know it's a business. It's okay to do the ask. It's how you do it. You know, you're not calling them and harassing them on the phone. It's just a note, you know, or if you can, if you knew the person or you know somebody who knew the person, you could also tell them, look, I know your mom went to this church and my mother went to this church. And, you know, my mom was the mayor of Rye, New York. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. Yeah. Marianne Ilse. And I will tell you a funny story about her. So she was a Republican conservative and she's gone now, but I talked to my sister all the time. Would she have been for Trump Would that, you know, like what, who would she have been? But anyway, she passed away and I got two letters from two brokers and I got to say they were really well done. You know, your mother was an amazing mayor of our town and, and, and then the, the last paragraph, you know, she, it wasn't a, form letter. She knew who my mother was, right. you know, and then the last paragraph said, look, I don't know what you're doing with her condominium, but, um, you know, I just want you to know that I'm 
you know, I, I would be happy to take, you know, I know this is a difficult time, whatever I could do to alleviate the difficulty, I'd be happy to do. I was not offended in the least. Yeah, that's... I, I think we might have even called one of them. I don't remember. But well, that's a personal letter. That's a very personal letter. Oh, yeah. By the way, I believe in snail mail now. Yes. So, more, and also, we've been designing, um, we've been designing note cards. You can send somebody a note saying, look, I just read about this in the paper. You don't say, hey, if you ever need to sell your house, call me. You can say, I just read about this in the paper. And I think it's really interesting because of this reason. And then you, it, the note card on the back says who you are. They know what you do, but they're going to hold on to that card. You know, you're putting yourself in front of them and giving them a mirror and a window into that which they aspire to be. So, Christine, can you a little on snail mail? What? Can you expand just a teeny bit on snail mail? On snail mail. Can you expand a little on snail mail? Oh, snail mail. I, you know, I believe in it in my business. You know, we're starting this month to send our clients a small gift every month. I send notes to our clients saying, God, thank you for letting us do this particular thing. We, you nailed it. We nailed it. You know, you go. I also, you know, things were always confirmed in letters. You know, history was always confirmed in letters and now it'll probably be confirmed in emails or if they can find out if they're true or not. But, um, but I believe in the written word. And it's funny because I just wrote um, a short article yesterday, which we'll send you a link to. Um, I decided I have books. Everybody has books that they've got on their bookshelves. And I write in my books a lot when I'm reading, I'll write stuff. And Ruth Bader Ginsburg's library went on the market and um, they estimated it was going to go for 300,000 or so. I don't remember some low. Okay. It went for 2.4 million. And what was interesting was they knew that her law books would do well because she annotates everything, right? They knew her law books would do well, but they didn't know. So Gloria Steinem's autobiography, Gloria wrote her a note you know, you've been an inspiration to me, hope you enjoy this book, blah, blah, blah. That went for $58,000. And get this, a huge number of women registered to buy, to buy on the, and that in much larger percentage numbers than ever any other book sale before. Women don't buy a lot, didn't buy a lot of books. And get this, most of the women and people who, who register for book sales in auctions are over the age of 40, 50, 60s, right? But these people were in their 20s and 30s and 40s as well. Absolutely. Yeah, so what, and that is that, again, that's a trend that is reflective of the mega trend. And basically my article says, you know, move over Gucci. Nobody cares about your bag anymore. They care about Ruth Bader Ginsburg books, you know? And then at the end I said, don't forget to write in the book. You never know, you know? And then also it was a thousand books and I did, put a note um, to my daughter in my article saying, you know, I haven't read a thousand books. I don't own a thousand books. You are never getting a thousand books <laughs> trying to sell. Look, it's a trend that that is definitely in line with the mega trend of people are living their lives differently and they want a book on the bookshelf, not a Louis Vuitton bag in the, in the closet. By the way, if you're giving, if you want to give a gift to somebody with a great kitchen, Glorious American Foods, written by Christopher Adone. We we find books that we think brokers can use that are so cool out of out of you know out of the realm. I think it's seventy dollars. You can still buy it. You need a first edition. You can still buy it. It's the history of American food. I mean, it talks about how oysters were so big in West. I mean, it's in the Northeast area that um, they filleted them rather than, you know, the oysters we have are so little, but back then they could grow to these huge sizes. So they actually filleted the oysters and then he has a great oyster recipe. It's a beautiful book. Everyone who gets it loves it. Give them gifts that are not, you know, please don't drop off another orchid. Promise me you'll never do that again. <laughs> so, so you can find clever ways. And again, shoot me an email. I'm happy to give you some ideas if you need one. Oh, yeah. Those are great ideas. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Okay. Anything else? I wish I could have a drink with all of you.
next time. Next time. Are you planning? Okay. Thank uh, you so much for coming, Sue. Thanks for having me. Are you planning on um, doing a workshop, perhaps? Yeah, I'm going to do a workshop. I'm coming. I'm coming um, for the St. Patrick's Day parade. Oh, and gosh. then, um, so I'm going to do a workshop. I hope the week or two after that. And anybody who's here tonight, I'm so sorry I wasn't there in person, and I would be happy to um, host you at that workshop. And maybe we'll even do it upstairs, Sue, and we'll rent that space from you or something, okay? Right. Christine, I have a question. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, it's just that it's in my, my personal uh, situation. I didn't want it to... Wait, to... I'm sorry. A little slower, what? That it's, in, it's about my personal business situation. Um, I am bilingual, so I have a lot of clients that are coming from out of state that are looking to work with somebody that speaks their language. So I have my business accounts in, um, in social media, in English, and another one in Spanish. So how do you think um, I should market or uh, post? Should I do both English and Spanish at the same time, or should I keep doing separate English and Spanish. Okay, I'm going to answer you honestly. And that is that, again, if you look at a mirror and a window into that which they aspire to be, you're going to have to pick. And so either you're going to serve that market solely, exclusively and brilliantly, but it's hard to combine those two markets. We've tried for other clients, it doesn't work. And so again, if your English is not their English, then they, you know, it's very hard to find that mirror. So what I would do is I would embrace the incredible talent that you have in this and the history that you have. And I would also start showing some of the Spanish and some of the incredible uh, local things that are, you know, that, that fit into that mold. Do you know what I mean? So I would ignore, I would certainly post in both English and Spanish, but I, if I were you, I would try to post in Spanish first and then let it translate into English and see how that works. Okay. Uh, you know, that's my truthful answer. It would be in, in a different world, that would be different. But again, that's the way we are living and that's the way we have to deal. But I got to tell you, it's a huge market. And the other thing is there are a lot of people buying from Spanish countries, buying in places like here. So I would start to boost. You can boost for $5 and you could start placing in Rio de Janeiro and other places you could be placing your posts so that they're like, that's my my person if I'm gonna come and buy a house. You know, you just have to find the markets that are gonna be your mirror and your window that people are aspiring to. Okay. Bye Thank everyone. You. Have a nice Bye. night. Bye. Thank you for coming. Thank you. 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 Thank you.